<laughs> if you want to radically transform your body, you need to lift weights. And that's the truth. That's it. That's like the whole video. I could just cut it right here. No, I'm kidding. Let's dive in. By the end of this video, you're going to know exactly what you need to do to get started so that you can build your dream body. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Regis. I once started out trying to transform my body and thought cardio was the way I was going to do it. I was wrong. I discovered weightlifting and I've never gone back. And now I am obsessed with trying to get the message out that every woman should start weightlifting. Every woman everywhere. A fear that I hear a lot from women is, ooh, I don't want to lift heavy. I think it's going to make me look masculine. I think it's going to make me bulky and too big and just unattractive. And I don't want that. But what's crazy is that the opposite is true. Lifting heavy weights is going to give you the body that you've been dreaming of. Don't believe me? Let me show you a couple of examples. Check this out. All of these women lift weights in order to look like this. Victoria Beckham. Gal Gadot actually put on 14 pounds of muscle in order to play Wonder Woman. Emma Stone put on 15 pounds of muscle in order to play Billie Jean King. Beyonce lifts weights. Adele lost all that weight by lifting weights. Blake Lively, Brie Larson, Jessica Biel, Kate Beckinsale, Ashley Graham. The list really goes on and on. Look at these women. Do any of these women look bulky to you? I think they look gorgeous. I am so confident in this that I can guarantee that any woman you see and you look at them and you think, oh my God, I wish I looked like that. I wish my body looked like that. They got that body by weightlifting. Now that we put that to rest and you are confident that you are not going to get bulky, let's move on and talk about what is going to happen when you start strength training. Wait, hold on a second. Strength training? I thought you said weightlifting. Weightlifting, strength training, resistance training, these are all more or less different names for the same thing. The overall process is we are moving our muscles against some form of resistance. And by doing that, we are sending our muscles the message that they need to grow and become bigger and stronger. And as women, we want this. We want to put on and maintain as much muscle mass as possible. Why, you ask? Well, let me ask you a question. Do you know that one guy who can eat like 20 pizzas and never gain any weight? And have you ever noticed that men can eat and eat and eat and not seem to gain weight? And if we so much as even look at a donut the wrong way, we put on five pounds? Well, hold on to your butts because I'm about to tell you their secret. It's because they have more muscle than we do. That's it. Let me explain. Muscle is hungry all the time. It is burning up calories all day, every day, all night, even when you're sleeping, even when you're resting. This means that you can eat way more and not gain any weight, just like the guys do. I've experienced this firsthand. Let me tell you a story. When I first started my fitness journey, I had put on some fat and I didn't really like the way I looked. I didn't like the way my fat was sitting. I didn't like the shape of my legs. I didn't like the shape of my torso and I wanted to change. Based on the knowledge I had at the time, which mostly came from scanning the covers of magazines and stores, I figured I'm going to go out running and I'm going to run and run and run and this fat is going to go away and I'm going to get the body that I want. So I started running and when running didn't work, I started elliptically and that didn't work either. And I didn't understand why it wasn't working because I was running and running and burning so many calories and I was also in a 500 calorie per day deficit and yet it wasn't really working. After a little while, I started to become a smaller version of myself, but I was still that same shape. The shape that I didn't like was still there. I was just smaller by a little bit. I was really frustrated with these results. They were not what I wanted. I really couldn't understand why it wasn't working. I was in a 500 calorie per day deficit and I was doing cardio like crazy. And all I was getting was just a slightly smaller version of the same shape that I didn't want. And then one day I got a new boyfriend. And he was also looking to lose some weight, but instead he was going to the gym and lifting weights. I watched him and quickly I saw his results and I was not about to not be the attractive one in the relationship. And so I demanded that he teach me how he was training. And that's when it began for me with weightlifting. I started weightlifting and I started to see my own results. My legs and my torso started up shaping really nicely. And that was it. I was hooked. Then our bathroom scale broke and I didn't bother replacing it. I was in love with the results that weightlifting was giving me. I was loving how it was transforming my body and I didn't really care how much I was weighing at the time. Because again, my goal wasn't to weigh less. My goal wasn't to be lighter. My goal was to look great naked and weightlifting was giving me that. So I didn't really care how much I weighed. And to be honest, I still don't really care how much I weigh. Okay, enough reminiscing. You probably want to know how you're going to get these results for yourself. So let's get into it. 
What do you need to get started transforming your body? The best part about weightlifting is in the beginning, you don't even really need that much equipment. There is a lot of progress to be made just with body weight. What you do need though is a growth mindset. Like any new skill, the first time you try weightlifting, you're gonna suck at it. And that feeling of not being good at something, that's gonna suck too. I want you to embrace the suck. I want you to expect it and I want you to enjoy it. Think back, remember once you couldn't walk. You probably tried and failed a lot of times to learn that skill. As adults, we avoid the feeling of discomfort. We avoid doing things we're not good at. And I think that that is the primary reason why a lot of us are sick and overweight. Because we do what's comfortable and what's comfortable doesn't get you something new. It only gets you what you already have. Just like when you learned how to walk, your training will be the same. You're going to have to keep trying and keep trying and keep practicing until you get better. As adults, we shy away from this and I encourage you, do not shy away from this. Expect the suck, embrace the suck, and you will see results. I'm not trying to scare you off here. I just want you to have real expectations going into this. I'm trying to set you up for success. Your mindset is crucial here. It is going to mean the difference between success and failure. Let me tell you another story. I remember back to my first leg day. So we had just done squats and the next point was to do lunges. My boyfriend said, my then boyfriend, now husband, said 10 lunges per leg. So I start. I get two done and my legs are shaking and I'm wobbling and I'm losing my balance. And then I try to do a third, but it's not very deep. And I stand back up wobbling and I kind of had a mini freak out. And I went to him and I told him, I can't do this. It's not possible. Nobody can do this. I'll never be able to do this. It's too hard. Like, forget it. And he said, just keep going, keep trying, keep showing up. And I did because I trusted him. And what's annoying is that he was right. I kept going to leg day. I kept doing the lunges. I kept doing more and more lunges. And now lunges aren't a big deal for me. I moved on from just 10 lunges to more lunges to adding weights to lunges to more complicated moves. If you've heard that saying that what is impossible now will one day be your warm up. It's true. It's annoying. You don't want to hear it, but it's true. This moment with the lunges was a critical mindset moment for me. If I had quit, I would not have the results that I have now. And that's why I'm telling you this story. This is where that growth mindset comes in. You need to know that maybe when you start, you will not be good at it. But if you keep going and you keep practicing and you keep showing up with intentional effort to get better, that you will get better. And that's a fact. If you are a human being on this planet, Getting better through intentional practice is your birthright. That's what we do as human beings. So believe me when I say practice and embrace this growth mindset, and it will help you in your journey. Your job is to show up with intention. Because every time you add your resistance and you push your muscles against that resistance, they are going to grow bigger and stronger because that's what they are designed to do. Next thing you're going to need is patience. Results take time. While you are going to immediately feel the difference when it comes to strength training, in order to see the difference, it might take longer depending on what your body is now and your progress. Weightlifting is a long-term thing. It's not a sprint that you can hurry up to finish. This is you showing up for yourself day in and day out. It's going to become a staple in your life. This is you taking time to make yourself better. This is you putting on your own oxygen mask before helping someone that you love with theirs. If you become old and sick, you will be of no use to anybody. And so to make sure that you are there for the people that you love, you want to start weightlifting, resistance training, strength training, whatever you want to call it, you want to start it now. Deciding to be consistent with your weightlifting is you making sure that you are going to be strong enough to play with your kids. It's going to make sure that you can chase your grandkids. It's going to make sure that as you get older, you can still take care of yourself. Most people try to rush this. They look at exercise and weightlifting as something like they're going to do it for three months and then they're going to quit. That's not what we're talking about here. We are talking about adding something into our lives that we're going to keep doing for the rest of our lives. That's going to improve our quality of life. And that's why many people fail because they look at it as a short term thing. And then they often gain back any of the weight that they lost. That is not what we're talking about here. Even though everyone is different and everyone's reasons for starting weightlifting are different. We're all the same in some ways because we're all humans. And for all of us, managing our mind is key. Managing our mind is the difference between success and failure. As humans, we have biases that affect how we think and how we see the world. We are drawn to instant gratification and we avoid discomfort. 
And again, I believe that these tendencies are at the root of all the health issues and chronic diseases that we're all facing today. Just knowing that you are susceptible to these biases is not enough. You need to decide that this is what you want, and you need to decide that you are going to do what you need to do to get there. And then you need to decide it every day, again, day after day. And that's why many people fail. And that is why I'm saying how important it is for you to master your mind and embrace this growth mindset. Because yes, you can download meal plans and you can make training plans, but if you don't follow them through, nothing is gonna change and you're not gonna get the body that you want. All right, let's get into the details. What workout should you do? If you've looked on Instagram or the internet, you can see that there are hundreds of exercises and all of the equipment and all the moves can be overwhelming. Notice, this is a moment to manage your mind. I might not know what I am doing right now, but I can figure this out. And if I show up and keep practicing and keep trying to get better, I will get better because I am a human being and that's what human beings do. That is the growth mindset. Say that again, say it out loud. Say it to yourself every time you think you're gonna quit because something is too hard and it feels uncomfortable. I may not know what I'm doing right now, but I'm gonna figure it out. If I keep showing up and keep practicing with the intention to get better, I will get better because I'm a human being and that's what human beings do. I recommend that you start with body weight exercises, especially if you don't have very much equipment to work with. Some body weight exercises that you're gonna to wanna to do are squats, lunges, good mornings, planks, reverse crunches, hollow holds, push-ups, inverted rows, pull-ups, and tricep dips. These exercises should get you started working all the muscles of your body. Starting to learn these movements with your body weight allows you to master the movement before we add extra load on top of it. That way you can perform them safely. You may not be able to do some of these moves right off the bat, but remember, if you keep showing up and you keep practicing and you keep trying to get better, you will get better and you will be able to do those moves. And in the meantime, we're gonna start with regressions. Regressions are the easier versions of that exercise. And as you move to harder and harder options, those are called progressions. So we'll start with the regressions and then we will progress to the full movement and then eventually progress further and add weight to it. Let's talk about the details of building your workout plan. So the goal here is to build muscle and I'm all about efficiency and you getting the most bang for your buck. So in order to do this, we're gonna use compound movements. What's a compound movement? A compound movement is a movement that involves multiple joints and multiple muscles. So an example of a compound movement is the squat. Take a look at this. You see that we're using our quads, our glutes, our hamstrings, our calves, our core, our hip flexors, and our adductors. Multiple muscles, multiple joints. That's a compound movement. Now, let's contrast that to the bicep curl. When we do a bicep curl, we're only using a few of the muscles in the arm. See the difference? So what we wanna do is compound movements because they're going to help us put on a lot of muscle. Here are a list of compound moves. When you're doing your workout, you wanna do your compound moves at the beginning of your workout because they require the most strength and the most coordination. Both of those things are highest at the beginning versus when you get tired at the end. Let's discuss some important things to consider. The first one is imbalances. We all already have imbalances built in and they come from our handedness. So if you have a dominant hand, the hand and leg and arm of that side are stronger and more coordinated than the other side. So we already have that imbalance. And so when we train, we wanna make sure that we are not making that imbalance worse and instead we're trying to mitigate it. In order to do this, you wanna start your unilateral or one-sided movements with your weaker side first. Why, you ask? Well, let's pretend that you wanted to do 10 lunges per leg. So that's the goal. So you start with your strong leg, which for me is my right leg. If you were able to do 10 lunges on your right leg, that's great. Then you go to the other side and you ask your weak leg to do 10 lunges. And it can't, it can only do eight. You can only do eight on that side. So what you've effectively done is added to the imbalance. You've made your right leg even stronger than your left leg. And so to avoid this, what you do is start with your weaker side. So for me, it's my left leg. I always do my left leg lunges first. And so if I can only do eight on my weaker side, then I only do eight on my stronger side. And that's gonna help me close the gap between the two sides. There is another kind of imbalance, and this exists between the contralateral pairs of muscles. Contralateral meaning on opposite sides of the body. So a really common example is the quads and the hamstrings. 
most of us are quad dominant and our quads are stronger than our hamstrings and they're also more engaged and easier to kind of activate. So we already have a little bit of an imbalance. So when we design our trainings, we want to treat both sides of the body evenly. We don't want to overemphasize one side and then neglect the other side. When you're designing your workout plan, there's different things to consider. You've probably heard of a workout split before. A workout split is a way to organize yourself to make sure that you can intentionally hit all of your muscles. The reason we use these is because, again, people avoid discomfort. And so if you were left to your own devices and you went into the gym and could do whatever exercises you wanted, you would likely do the exercises that you already know how to do with the muscle groups that you're already strong with. And by doing those exercises over and over, you would continue to strengthen those muscles while continuing to neglect the others, furthering the imbalance. And so we use our workout splits to make sure that we are intentionally hitting everything evenly, as evenly as we can, and knowing that we are not neglecting any body part. Which split you use really depends on a lot of factors. There aren't any bad splits or wrong splits. There really are just different splits that work for different people in different seasons of life. Sometimes in our lives we have lots of things going on, sometimes it's a little bit quieter. It really depends on what's going on with you right now. But what you should do is give a split enough time to see if it's working for you. I fell prey to this a lot when I was beginning in that I would change up my workouts a lot because I would see something cool on the internet and be like, oh, I want to try that next time I'm there. But by changing things up too frequently, you don't give those compound movements the time that they need to give you the results that you want. So you want to stick with the training plan long enough for you to see progress. There are lots of popular workout splits. A couple of them are full body, which means that every time you go for a workout, you work out all the muscles of the body at once. There is upper body, lower body. So you either train upper or lower and you go between them. Or there's push, pull, and legs. So you alternate one day you're doing push movements, one day is pull movements, and the final day is leg movements before repeating again. And there are even some five-day splits and six-day splits where the body is broken down into the muscle groups and you train one of those every day. Again, which one is going to work best for you really depends on how much time that you have to dedicate to this as well as your current fitness level and what you're doing. Which split is going to work best for you will change as your goals change and will change as you get more experience. Let's get a little bit deeper. So how much time are you going to commit to doing this? If right now you already go to Zumba class on Tuesdays and spin class on Thursdays, one session of full body weightlifting would be a great addition and it would keep things interesting and you could still do the things that you liked and you would add on the weightlifting on top of what you're already doing. If you only have time to work out once a week, I recommend that you don't spend that time doing cardio. I would leave the cardio alone and instead I would do one session of full body workout, full body weightlifting once a week. That is what I recommend. Here's an example of a full body workout that you can do. And this one does not require any equipment. Doing a full body weightlifting session once a week is a great place to start. And if you feel like you want to increase it, we can going forward. How many times per week you need to work out really does depend on your current level and your goals and your schedule. There is some research that suggests that if you hit a muscle group two times within a seven day period, it will grow more than if you only hit it once. But again, if you only have time to do strength training once a week, it doesn't matter that it would be better if you hit it twice a week because you only have time for once a week. So put those ideas of perfect and not good enough out of your mind and just start with the once a week full body exercise that I recommended. In order to maintain a healthy metabolism and to build muscle and maintain that muscle, I recommend strength training three times a week. But again, what you are able to do depends on your schedule. You have to start with where you are. Show up, do the once a week, and then we can progress from there. The seasons of our lives change often and you may have too much on your plate to commit to three times a week. But again, start with where you are and don't be too hard on yourself. Now, what happens if you have access to equipment or a gym membership? Having this equipment adds resistance to those compound moves that we discussed earlier. But it also opens up a new series of moves that you can only do if you have an external form of resistance. For example, if we have dumbbells or a barbell, we can now add in the bench press and all of its variations. We can add in the row and its variations for our back muscles, and we can add in the overhead press for our shoulders. 
with its many variations. Having dumbbells can also allow us to add accessory movements like bicep curls and skull crushers, as well as all manner of shoulder flies like the reverse fly and the lateral fly and the front raise. Cable machines are great. They allow us to do more exercises. One example is the lat pull down and the cable row. These are both excellent exercises for our back muscles that we can do if we have access to this cable machine. These movements can also be done with a resistance band. Again, do not get overwhelmed with all the movements that you can do and all the equipment that you can use. Remember, the idea is that we are moving our muscles against resistance, whether it's our body weight or a cable machine or a barbell or a dumbbell. And when we move our muscle against that resistance, the muscle gets the message that it needs to grow stronger and bigger. And that's what we're looking for. How many reps and how many sets? So a rep is short for a repetition and a repetition is just the movement in its completion. So if you did one bicep curl, that's one rep of a bicep curl. A set is how many repetitions you're going to do before taking a break for a rest. And so if you did three sets of 10 bicep curls, you would do 10 bicep curls. You would rest for 60 to 90 seconds, and then you would do 10 more bicep curls and then rest. And then you would do 10 more bicep curls for three sets of 10. How many reps should I do? So there are different rep ranges for different goals. So again, it depends on your goals. If you are looking to build strength, but not necessarily size, you want to keep your rep ranges low. So you're looking at around four to five to six reps of the exercise before your rest. You'll be lifting heavy weight. And so your rest period is going to be longer. If you're looking to build size, you're going to go in the slightly higher rep range. And you're looking to be about 10 to 12 reps. And again, the rest period is a little bit shorter and could be between 60 and 90 seconds. Rest periods are really important because what you're doing is you are pushing your muscles to their limit during your working set, and then you're resting and giving them a chance to recuperate. And what you're asking from them is to go back to and give you 100% again. And so if you're showing up and you're not resting between your sets, each set your performance is going to get lower because you're not giving your muscles the time they need to recuperate in order to go again at the next set. Form is crucial. You don't want to do things wrong because you're going to hurt yourself. So if you're finding that you can't finish your sets without losing form, then increase your rests so that you can do the exercises properly and get the results that you want. Pro tip is to use your phone or your watch or the clock on the wall to monitor your rest time. Rest can get away from you. You can find yourself scrolling and then your one hour gym session turns into a two hour thing and you didn't want that. Similarly, some people don't rest enough because they feel like they're rested, so they just jump back into their next set. But if you don't give your muscles enough time to, re to recoup, you aren't going to put the output in that you want. So how many sets should you do? How many sets you're going to do is going to depend on your goals and your experience, but you want to start with three. So you want to do three sets of 10. If you're ever in doubt of how many reps and how many sets do of an exercise, just do three sets of 10. You really can't go wrong with that and your progress will be good selecting how much weight. So now remember again, let's go back to this growth mindset. The first time you do this, it's going to be difficult and you may not get it right. When we're selecting weight, the weight we're trying to select is what weight can I push in this exercise with correct form 10 times where the ninth and 10th time are really, 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 really hard. And I'm not sure I can do it, but I end up doing it. And the form is correct. That's the mindset when you're choosing weights. And again, you're going to go into the gym and you're going to pick up the weight and it may be too heavy. It may be too light. It may be just right. You don't know yet because you haven't done it. And so while you're watching this on your screen, do not get overwhelmed because it will make sense and you will be able to action on it when you're in person with the weights that you want to select. So remember, you're looking for a weight that you can lift 10 times where the last two reps are really, really hard, but you're able to do them with proper form. That's the ideal weight. So again, if you go in there and you pick a weight and you get to 10 and it's way too easy and you can easily do 10 more, 20 more, 30 more, that weight is too light. Put that weight down, have a short rest, pick the next larger weight and try that. And again, so you're just looking. There's a little bit of trial and error here. Be patient with yourself. You're not in a rush because once you select that weight, then you will do your sets and then you'll know for next time. And soon, believe it or not, that weight will become too light for you because that's what we're talking about. When you lift that weight, that resistance is going to cause your muscle to grow and it's going to outgrow that weight. 
And then the next time you go back in there, you're going to have to choose a higher weight in order to continue to give that signal that's going to demand the growth from our muscles, which is what we want. Now, on the other hand, if you pick up a weight that's too heavy and you go to try to do your reps and you can't even do three, that weight is too heavy. Carefully put it back and choose a weight lower. So remember, the sweet spot is you're looking for 10 reps where the 8th, the 9th, and the 10th are really hard, but you're able to do them with good form. Okay, so let's recap. You are going to start resistance training because you care about your future. You want to build a strong body, and you may want to look like one of those beautiful women that I showed pictures of in the beginning. It is a process. It takes consistent practice. You are not going to be good at it when you start, but you are going to keep showing up with that intention to get better. Your muscles will grow because you will increase the resistance and they will continue to grow with you. You're looking for rep ranges of 10 and you're looking for sets of three. So we're going to do three sets of 10 of each of the exercises. I've given you a sample workout that requires no equipment. It's full body and it's full of compound movements that you can get started with in order to master the important moves that you're going to be using throughout your weightlifting career, really. What is important is your growth mindset and knowing that you will get better. The second most important thing is the patience and knowing that this is going to take time. Weightlifting is not a sprint. You are not going to be done with this. It is not something for you to rush through and hurry to finish. This is something you're going to show up for for yourself and down the line for the people that you love. Check out the other videos in this playlist because there's lots more to discuss when it comes to weightlifting. Things like nutrition and other really interesting topics. If you have any questions, leave them down below and you can always reach out to me. I would love to hear from you. Give that workout a try. I promise that you will be hooked on the results that weightlifting will give you. All you have to do is start and continue to show up even when it's uncomfortable. And I promise that you will get better and you will build the body that you're dreaming of.